Inspector General Keith Kellogg. And I've been, what, I've been listening to you since the beginning of this. And one of the things that you had talked about was, one, the bravery, the strength, and the capabilities and the talents of the Ukrainian yeah. military defenses. Uh, now we're turning to looking at what is happening within the Russian forces. Here's a senior, uh, un, unnamed senior defense official says some of their soldiers in Russia are suffering from frostbite because they lack the appropriate cold weather gear for the environment that they're in, in addition to food and fuel, even in terms of personal equipment for some of their troops, they're having trouble. Are you hearing the same? Yeah, Dana, thanks for having me this morning. Look, there's two parts to this. One is morale of the forces that you see, and you're seeing really the Ukrainians are fighting for something. There's an old Napoleonic axiom that goes, Morale to the physical is three is to one, which means if you're, you've got morale in your organizations and you've got great leadership, and clear, clearly the Ukrainians do, especially with uh, President Zelensky, they want to fight for something. You can see that. The second part of it is leadership. And it's clear that the leadership of the, of the Russians are not providing the troops the support they need. When it comes, you see troops foraging for food, going into stores and taking food. These are their frontline units. Don't let anybody tell you they're not. He's thrown the best he's had. Putin's thrown the best he's had at it, and, and they're failing. And the longer this goes, the worse it is for him. Because like any military organization, as you extend in time, as each day goes by, it gets harder and harder. I mean, it gets cold, you get tired, you get hungry. And you're seeing that, and, and clearly the Ukrainians are fighting for something, and the Russians are probably questioning right now what they're fighting for. I wonder so if I give the edge to the Ukrainians right now. I wonder, General, if there's a difference when you talk about you know the morale and the and the troops on the ground and the tactical thing, because you have Russian analysts even and American analysts saying that Russia has made every tactical mistake possible. <laughs> Do you believe that? Trace, not only have they made tactical mistakes, they've made a strategic mistake, they've been operational, they made tactical. What I mean by that, very simply, strategic mistake is they went, didn't go for the capital, Kiev, and take out the government. They had three to five major assaults, not coordinated at all. So that was a strategic error. Operationally, they committed all their forces early, uh, especially the airborne forces mm -hmm. went in early. They got hammered. They had to, they defeated and left. And then on the tactical level, their troops are just not organized. Mm. And they're starting to, to, you see the fragmentation of it. I mean, all this is edging towards the Ukrainians. Now, over time, look, the Russians outnumber them almost nine to 10 to one. So just mass does apply. But right now they're stalled out. And I give the edge right now to the Ukrainians. That's what should concern Putin. And my concern with Putin is what is he gonna do next when he sees this, this whole offensive stall out, which it is. General, last night uh, CNN had the Putin spokesperson on. They asked about nuclear weapons. This is what he said. Mm -hmm. And I want to know whether you are convinced or confident that your boss will not use that option. Well, we have a concept of uh, domestic security for nuclear uh, arms to be used. So if it is an ex existential threat for our country, then it can be used in accordance with our concept. All right, General, I th get, let's get your thoughts on that. I, don't, I think that in some ways the story was quite overwritten. Um, you would imagine that they yeah. would say everything's on the table just as others would say if their country was in a similar situation. Just like, I just don't think that any leader would ever say something is completely off the table. Yeah, Dana, look, I, I come at this a little bit differently. I don't think the nuclear option really is in play right now. I'm more worried about the chemical option because right. chemical mm -hmm. nerve gas, that has been used. It's in their DNA. Putin has used that against his political opponents. Look what he did to Navalny. He's used it in support of the Syrians. Uh, and remember back in 2012 and 13, when President Obama with Vice President Biden there drew a red line when uh, on nerve gas use in Syria, they violated the red line. We did nothing. He killed over a thousand people in Damascus using nerve gas, using sarin nerve gas. Fast forward to 2017, when that happened on President Trump's watch in April, a much smaller scale, killed about 100. We hammered them with 60 T lambs. And I remember sitting in the, in the Situation Room and also in the Oval Office when that went in. In fact, President Trump at the time said we ought to put one through the front door of the Russian commander sitting on that airfield mm -hmm. and probably mm -hmm. one through President Assad's front door as well. And we didn't have anything happen after that. But it's in their DNA. They may want to use it because it does disperse quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's, a phys it's a weapon that puts absolute fear in, in the hearts of civilians. And he may try to leverage that 
to get Zelensky to come to the table. That's my biggest concern. And I'm wondering, General, when you talk about, you know, we, this concept of domestic security, because one of them that really struck me is the one that says, uh, and, and the um, Kremlin spokesman uh, addressed this, he said, you know, if you look at NATO's eastward expansion, that's in the, the Russian uh, concept of domestic security. And if NATO peacekeeping troops go in there, that could be considered yeah. the same, NATO troops. Yeah, yeah Trace, I, I, we, we need to stop reacting to Putin. We need to tell him, hey, this is what we're going to do. That's why it's so important today when President Biden goes to Brussels and talks to the NATO alliance, there needs to be some deliverables that come out of that. We need to tell the Russians this is what we will not accept be it the chemical or biological or nuclear areas, what we're talking about, what you just mentioned on peacekeeping, we should stop reacting to this guy. We should be providing him the MiGs. We should be providing him uh, air defense capability, put an iron dome over at least the western part of Ukraine. But every time we seem to be reacting to him, I've reached a point mm. where, look, we've, he's shown his military to be very weak. It's really an ineffective military. And it's time for NATO, if I may say this, it's time for NATO to man up and say, mm. we're not going to accept certain things and tell him that. Yeah. Yes, sir. You can say that, General. You can say whatever you want here with us. Thank you so much for being <laughs> Thank here. You, we sir. appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Dana. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.